Hi everybody, so this stuff, vegetable oil, it's becoming hugely popular as an alternative fuel and you can understand why, because fuel prices are crazy at the moment. Of course, this stuff is much, much cheaper, unless of course you want it from the Ukraine, in which case you'll pay through the nose and run a Russian blockade. But, vegetable oils are becoming an idea for people to use. Now you can actually just use it like that. You can pour that into your car, if your car happens to be, come from before the 1970s and you want to put it maybe in a lawnmower or a diesel generator or something like that, it will actually burn this stuff just fine. It will, of course, cook up your injectors and cook up your piston rings and possibly destroy your fuel system, but you can pour it straight in and run it for a week or two, by all means, with it unadulterated. However, despite those problems, of course, vegetable oils tend to be very much thicker and they tend to burn at higher temperatures. This is rapeseed oil, so it's about 450 Fahrenheit, 250 degrees centigrade, sort of round about that. Diesel's round about 50 degrees centigrade, something like that. So the temperature you need to raise this up to is very much higher. And of course, it's very much more viscous as well, so it's a bit more difficult to get it to spray properly and to go through the fuel pipes, all that sort of stuff. And you can't run a primer stove on this. It's just too thick. So the problems associated with oils means that people have been doing something with it. And what they've been doing is making biodiesel. Now, if you look at a diesel molecule, it actually looks like this. It's just a long chain hydrocarbon. If we then have a look at a fairly typical oil molecule, it looks like this. And you'll notice it looks really like three diesel molecules attached to that red bit at the end. That red bit at the end is uh, basically glycerine. They're not quite diesel, they've got some extra bits on them, but essentially that's what you've got. So the job of making biodiesel is to take this stuff, oils and fatty acids, and knock that glycerin off so that you essentially get the diesel chain. And of course what that means is the viscosity drops through the boots and so does the temperature at which you need to burn it, and then it can be a direct replacement for diesel. Now it's often said that diesel himself, good old Otto, designed his engine to run on vegetable oil anyway. It's not true, he actually designed it to run on mineral oil. It was just that he was giving an exhibition in the 1880s at the Paris exhibition when the French sidled up to him and said, do you think that will run on peanut oil? And he gave the same answer I often give, which is, I don't know, let's try it. And he tried it, and the only people who noticed were those people who changed that fuel. Everybody else thought it was running on normal diesel, so to speak. So that was a huge thing that he did. It was reported quite widely, actually, and that's where that particular myth comes from. Unsurprisingly, the reasons everybody were interested in vegetable oils at that time was um, fuel and energy security. In fact, exactly the same reasons we're interested in it today. So the major developments in the creation of biodiesel and the transformation of vegetable fats into diesel-like materials followed the wars. There was a lot of interest in the uh, First World War, super interest in the Second World War, and of course, the various petrol crises that we've been through. And we are in a petrol and climate change crisis at the moment, so there is, of course, a huge amount of interest in it. Now, that process of knocking off the glycerol is called transesterification. And the first patent on that was in 1858, something like 40 years before the first engine was produced. In 1912, Diesel himself gave a speech when he said that although vegetable oils were pretty insignificant in his time, he could foresee a time when they would compete directly with petroleum products. I mean, that guy, really, both a genius and a bit of a prophet. So this process of knocking off the glycerol, the transesterification, is actually stunningly easy. What you need is basically three components, an alcohol, your oil, and some kind of catalyst. And the catalyst is sodium hydroxide or drain cleaner. You can also use potassium hydroxide if you want. Your oil is just such a huge range of oils that you can use. You can actually use animal oils as well, so things like tallow and chicken fat. And though I don't know, I'm assuming the, um, the extract from liposuction would probably work really quite well. And an alcohol. Now, traditionally, um, it's methanol that's used, and that's because methanol gives the highest output. But you can use ethanol, you can use propanol. In fact, the first patent that we talked about used ethanol. But everybody, everybody is using methanol, so we're going to use methanol, rapeseed, and sodium hydroxide. And we stick them in a funnel, so something like this. And the ratio, by weight, 100 grams of this, 
22 grams of this and somewhere between 5 and 1 gram of this. Now there's somewhere between 5 and 1 gram is because what a lot of people do is they use an oil that's got an awful lot of stuff called free fatty acid and they use it without knowing and that means it's quite acidic and they get a jelly. They also get a jelly when they don't run it long enough or they don't put enough of the solvent in there then they'll also get a jelly. So having a little bit of variety on this means that that free fatty acid is neutralised and you likely get a better result. So what do you do? Well it's just uh, unbelievably simple. You put the stuff in in those ratios that I've said and then heat it. And you heat it to 60 degrees centigrade, 58 to 60, which when you think about it is tremendously low. Then stir it for a couple of hours and you're done. Anyway, let's put that stuff in here. Okay, so step one, 100 milliliters of ethanol, three grams of sodium hydroxide, chuck that in there. And stir until the sodium hydroxide is done, is dissolved. When the methanol has dissolved, step two, pour in your oil. Then step three, leave it alone for a couple of hours. Grab a cup of tea, read a book, or just indulge yourself in something that you find recreational. So a couple of hours later, all I've done is I've put into the separation funnel. Now you can make a separation funnel any size you like. I've seen those big office water bottles, you know, the five gallon ones. Turn them upside down, put a hose on, put a clip on it, and that becomes a separation funnel. This bit is your glycerol. Now this has uh, most of the muck in it, actually. That's where the methanol is. So if you distill that, you can get the methanol back. Glycerol used to be a brilliant product by itself, but because in 1987 the Brazilians opened up a factory doing exactly this, they pushed the glycerol onto the market and the glycerol price dropped. So people are now looking at turning this thing into something else. So there isn't as much of a market for this. But if you're doing your own home stuff, of course, you don't have nearly enough to sell. But it's great for, um, well, dry skin, chapped lips, that sort of thing. It's much better than cat oil. So if you want to save that and use it for something else, I said cat oil because have you ever seen the Book of Eli? If you've seen that film, you'll know what I mean. If you want to save that and use it for something else, you can do, you want to reclaim the methanol, you can do. What you're after is this stuff here. This is your diesel. This is a bit cloudy because it's still got a bit of muck in it. So all we have to do is separate this stuff off, which you do really easily by turning this tap or opening your um, little clip on the bottom of your rubber. And it will just pour out. There she blows. And then we need to wash this. We wash this just by adding a bit of water, shaking it up and doing exactly the same thing because of course the oil will float, uh, float on the water. After you've done that three or four times, you have your diesel. Okay, so after four washes, that's what you end up with. Now we started with that and we separated out the glycerin stock glycerol. Remember the methanol's in there, you can recover it by distillation and we've got our biodiesel and our wastewater. And it really is as simple as that. I mean, I made about half a litre, but to make 20 litres, which is probably what I use in fact, you know, a week, it's no different. It's the same time, it's just a, a bigger volume, so your equipment's going to be a little bit bigger. Now, currently, what they're accepting is, um, I think it's 5, 10 and 20%. So if you go to the diesel, it's called B5, it's B it's 5%, B10 is 10% and B20 is 20%. And they're using 20% in um, different countries. But they are playing around with B50, So, yeah, which is 50%. Your option is to use, try to use this pure, if you like, or cut it with some diesel, which is exactly what they're doing with modern diesel cars now, and they're heading towards B100. But, super simple, super easy. You find yourself a cheap source of oil, you've got yourself a cheap source of fuel. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.